Hello and welcome into the Credible Vets Report. My name is Craig Slate. Joining me today is my co-host, Matt Mandel. Hey guys, on this week's episode, we'll be updating you on our normal weather watch. And boy, do we have some weather to talk about today. Uh, there's another tropical storm, call it hurricane, I think, that's uh, made landfall and maybe a few in behind that. And uh, the heat is still extreme and it still seems to be prevalent in most places. Walmart, well, they're leveling up on the online grocery sales. They're uh, kicking that uh, proverbial boote, as they say. While the FTC is doing a little cracking down on some of those major retails. And demand for your favorite American starch seems to be down and suffering a little bit uh, as the consumers start to tighten up their wallet. But before we get into the show, I want to say hello, Matt Mandel. What's going on, Mr. Matt? Good afternoon. I am fighter and frog's hair back in Arizona for two straight weeks. It's uh, it's a little strange sleeping in my own bed for as long as I have, but apparently the family likes to have me around, so I think I'll stick around for a little while longer. Well, uh, congrats on that. Yeah, I've, uh, I've I've missed quite a few nights in my bed, uh, so I, I, I know how you were feeling, and I, I've been feeling that way, but uh, definitely glad to be back in beautiful Tucson, although I got to be honest, uh, you know, I, I do kind of miss uh, wearing a jacket. In fact, I've kept my vest around just to, to remind me what it's like to be uh, 75 in the month of July. So keep the, uh, keep the AC cranked really low around the house. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of, well, I telling you takes care of that. So that's, not, that's not a problem. In fact, I actually have to wear a vest and sometimes a hoodie here at the house. So, but anyway, it's, uh, you know, we're not dealing with hurricanes, Matt. And uh, I think uh, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, you were kind of on the forefront on uh, hurricane watch, weren't you? On the forefront of Hurricane Watch, uh, I, I don't know if I would go that far, but uh, no, yeah, there's Michigan's not not quite Hurricane Central. No, no, but I'm talking about you. The one of the calls before you talked about something that you did uh, two oh. weeks ago. You mentioned you were you were ahead of the curve. You you know my crystal you even, ball. You even sent me a note saying, "Up, oh, hate to be right, but guess what? I was right again." So. Wow. Uh, I, I, I was partial. I was partially right. You know, my, my prediction was off by a couple of days. I, I said uh, around August 10th, we'd be looking at hurricane activity. And what do you know? Hurricane Debbie came through, uh, actually gained, gained steam a little faster than we expected. Made landfall over the uh, panhandle in Florida, caused quite a bit of devastation through the area. Thankfully, uh, the uh, loss of life was was minimal. However, there was quite a bit of damage to farms and infrastructure. And, uh, you know, Debbie is now sitting off the coast of the Carolinas. Yeah, you know, my original prediction was that it would, it would actually gain steam before it made second landfall. However, it seems to just be hanging off the coast. Um, you know, what does that uh, what does that mean? Uh, means it's not going to be moving fast when it does make landfall, which can actually cause more severe problems. Uh, I was going to say, probably means a lot of rain if I had to guess. I mean, I'm no, no expert on the whole deal, but I'm guessing they're going to be dealing with a lot of water. Quite a bit of water. The uh, I saw a forecast this morning. Well, I don't know if it'll be that excessive. They were saying it could be anywhere from two to three feet, feet, not inches, but two to three feet of rain in North Carolina over a 24 hour period, which would Oof. absolutely shatter uh, the record for the amount of precipitation from a single storm. Um, and what, you know, it's, so, 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 okay. So what is the record? If it's going to be some shattering taking place, we got to know what, what it is we're shattering. I, I believe it was from Harvey and I think it was, it was, it was low thirties. But uh, you know, if you're getting three feet of rain, 36 inches, that's that's, that's a, a heck of a record of breaker. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, well, the lakes ought to be full for sure. Man, that is crazy. I had I had not heard that. I did talk to some some folks uh, there that uh, live on the western side of the Florida Peninsula there, and 
they said uh, it was worse than they expected. Honestly, when it came 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 ashore, uh, their anticipation wasn't for it not to be that bad. But they, uh, yeah, they they didn't get any damage. But man, they got a lot more water and wind than they had anticipated. So oh oh, Daddy came through and uh, made an impact. Sounds like and still kicking around out there. She she she's no little Debbie, that's for sure. You know the the east the east they've been getting rain pretty much uh, all over the up in, even in the northeast without the hurricane. There's been rain has been a plenty in in that part of the country. Yeah, well, and with with once Debbie does make landfall, and I, I talked about the the fact that it's going to be moving slowly. You know, she's just going to make her way all the way up the east coast, dropping quite a bit of precipitation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you can expect, you know, rains over the next five to seven days all along the East Coast. And while it may not be two to three feet, you can expect at least six inches of rain pretty much all along the East Coast, which is going to be absolutely devastating to, to crops. Uh, it's going to cause quite a bit of flooding, havoc, and general mayhem. So uh, it, the, the outlook does not appear favorable for the East Coast for the next week or so. Man, that's uh, that sucks for sure. But um, you know, we've got our own opportunities, as they would say, or challenges here in uh, here in the great Southwest. Man, the excessive heat uh, heat warnings, particularly here for Arizona and Nevada, continue on. Uh, it's hot as blue blazing, as they say back in Texas. And I don't know exactly what blue blazing is. Though. I was just about but, to ask what that means, but you know, but it, maybe uh, I shouldn't ask. In Texas, a lot of times the sayings, we just kind of made stuff up, I think, back in the day, and nobody actually knew what it was. They just went along with it. So, But, yeah, hot is what that means. And, uh, you know, we've got these uh, – you know, I was coming back from California. I ran into something. Uh, it, it appeared to be what they call a haboob. You, you haboob. ever heard of haboob? Uh, oh, is it haboob? Haboob, Yes. Yeah, so you've heard of one of those? I have. I've I've driven through one, and it's uh, it's a terrifying experience. Imagine. Well, see, I, maybe mine wasn't exactly a hub boob. Then maybe mine was just a hub. Yeah, it was it was th threatening to be a boob, but it didn't quite develop into a boob. It was just a hub because it, it was no, not that a, wasn't that scary. A, 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 a basically a giant thunderstorm without precipitation. So you're gonna have. High winds, extreme amounts of dust blowing. There usually will be enough precipitation to get your car filthy and mess up your windshield. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not the safety expert, but if you ever do find yourself in a boob, pull over. Don't try driving through it. You can't see far enough to. You will you'll 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 end up in an accident. I've seen it before. Thankfully, I have never no. been in one, but it is not a fun experience. <laughs> Our PSA for today: Avoid the haboob. Right. But hey, I, you know, I, we're, I guess we're, we're doing our part. So, you know, you, okay, here, here's one. I, if you know this, uh, you know what? The, the show ends here. Well, I'm not going to say that because you may actually know hey, this. Nice. Do you know in Arizona how we become, how we came to call those massive dust storms haboob? Do I, I don't. I, I believe okay. it's actually an Arabic word. I, it I is that, that so so that is the uh, that so they have those there that's where it actually came from but in 1971 gang then this is the stuff you're not going to get anywhere else in 1971 a group of scientists they witnessed an Arizona dust storm so huge that they pr proposed calling it a haboob and the term as Mr. Matt Mandel mentioned is from an infamous dust storm that took place in the Sudan there you go. So, I was I, I was partially correct. Does that mean that we're going to cut it ten minutes short today and we'll go about our merry way? <laughs> you you and the listeners both are hoping that's the case, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. We must uh, trudge on and continue on go, going forward, uh, and we'll we'll go into uh, speaking speaking of haboobs. Um, how about the how about the FTC? Uh, and there's news out of there. Uh, they've, yeah. uh, they've been, uh, uh, they've been a active, uh, trying to save the consumer wallet. Uh, they've, they've gone out and the FTC, uh, Lena Khan from the FT, the FTC chair 
has launched an inquiry into high grocery prices. FTC officials claim these prices are consistently being complained about by consumers. And a quote I'm reading here from uh, Ms. Khan is too often people feel like too much of their paycheck is going towards covering the basics like meat or bread or eggs, says Lena. So uh, what do you think about the FTC in this uh, going after the grocery stores? Any, any thoughts along those lines? So, you know, you know, one, one thing that you left out that, that was mentioned in the article is that while inflation is going up, you know, as is it, corporate profits are, are at record levels as well. Right. So this is this is the, what they're referring to as greedflation. Uh, people <laughs> trying to mask profits as, as, as inflation and, and inflating prices at the grocery store. Um, you know, from a personal standpoint, I, I tend to be a free market guy. So. You know, if if they can make a buck while they're doing it, go for it. However, I also uh, am completely aware and and sympathetic to you know the the rising costs at the grocery store and understand that you know <clears throat> if there is a little bit of price gouging going on in the you know masked as inflation, then I, I mean I, I'm not okay with that either. Yeah, I mean I, I, I'm a anti-reg guy. So, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's, I, I get it. I, I'm, 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 a, now I'm probably not aligned with you on that. I mean, I'm just like, you know, it kind of, you know, they, companies got to make profits and when consumers quit buying it, the prices will come down. That's kind of the way I figure it'll work. You know, Mac, McDonald's has gone back to like a $5 or happy meal or some kind of deal. Why? Because guess what? People quit buying hamburgers because they got too damn expensive. So I don't know. I'm always uh, resistant to to think about the government stepping in on anything because it's really hard to understand what markets are and what's going on. But I, I do get it. There have been some record profits and uh, greed inflation. Uh, is that what it was that the terminology? Greed, used? Greed inflation. Greedflation. That's that's a new one. I mean, shrinkflation. That was one that we got got put into the lexicon this year. So. Uh, now we got greedflation. So I don't know. We'll see where that goes. Be interesting. But uh, yeah, the, the the grocery folks uh, better look out. Uh, Kroger, Kroger's already aware of that with their uh, $24 billion acquisition of the Albertsons and that merger kind of being put, uh, well, not on ice, but uh, certainly in the chiller. Uh, so it's on perma hold at, at the moment. It is. It is on the perma hold for sure. For sure. But uh I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But, you know, speaking of, uh, if we want to talk about how things have been going in the grocery world, Walmart uh, continues to set records. And uh, I don't know, you know, based on at least the, the analysis, I don't know that theirs is is really greedflation, but uh, our greed. Yeah. Is that what it was? Greedflation? Yeah, I don't greed want to mess that up. All right. Yes. But uh, because we'll, we'll they're no, yeah, they're no, Walmart is certainly known. And I think what they've been, enjoying uh, for based on at least what I read as uh, people coming to them because it's getting too expensive elsewhere and pocketbooks are getting tight and people are leaning into it. But, you know, one thing that surprised me is uh, a report came out this week that 37% of the country's 37%, Matt. Okay. That's a hell of a number. 37% of the country's online grocery market was Walmart. One, now well, over one one three dollars was spent just with Walmart. Yeah, that's crazy. And then you know they're they're I guess next similar competitor, and and they don't have as many super centers, so it's it's kind of hard to say. But just as a comparison, Target, hell, they were seven percent, seven percent of the grocery online sales with them. You know, with the rest of the industry down around twenty, you know, if you look at the overall supermarket industry, the people that are in the business every day, they're twenty seven percent. So. Walmart's done a, a remarkable uh, job in the online space and, and leaning into that. And, um, you know, they've been doing a lot of things right. Uh, you know, the, if you look at their their stock price, it's been ripping since uh, June of 22. Uh, it was it was as low as 40 bucks a share back in June of 22. And that dude capped out uh, a little over 70 bucks a share in mid-July. I mean, it's pulled back some, you know, caught the Mid, mid to high 60s but still uh quite quite a quite an appreciation in the stock price and 
you know, it, there's speculation, I guess, back in June, uh, back in 2022, there was an expiration of the child uh, tax credit. And, you know, of course, overall inflation uh, across everything, not just food, just everything out there is, has really tightened up the wallets and uh, led to people uh, maybe uh, heading over there for, for, for a bargain, it looks like. So. Well, and it's it, it may be entirely a coincidence. Right around June of twenty two is when Walmart's uh, online e grocery uh, share actually surpassed that of all the other supermarkets. So, uh, you know, since then they've kind of been on a tear with their market share growing, and everybody else is on the decline. So they're they're clearly doing something right. You know, whether it's the whether it's a matter of you know, consumers looking for lower cost goods and, and Walmart is, is filling that gap or whether or not they're just doing a better job at reaching those consumers in the online space. I'm not entirely sure, but whatever they're doing, it's definitely working out for them. Yeah, no, no doubt about it. So, yeah. So, Matt, I, you know, Walmart is one company that has done really well, but there is a company that hasn't enjoyed any greedflation or actually any advantages i guess you might say to this whole inflation picture if, and if you say sunfed i'm going to be very upset with you right now no sir i'm not going to say sunfed in any of those camps we haven't had any greed inflation or any outsized profits we've just been greed churning along inflation. greed inflation no in so, so, greed inflation so greedflation i gotta leave the inflation part out Seems like it seems like it's the nice greedflation, shrinkflation, greedflation, greedflation. So yes, no, SunFed has not been participating in. Here's a we have not participated in any greedflation. We have not seen any outsized profits. We've just been churning along at a very healthy rate, and we are enjoying a nice summer. Thank you all. So yes, but no, a company that has struggled a bit. Uh, that is our friends at Lamb Weston. And Matt, I believe you've got some insight into who in the hell Lamb Weston is, because I don't know. I'll tell you what, I don't, but the internet does. Oh, Lamb well, Weston. Lamb Weston is an American food processing company that is one of the world's uh -huh. largest producers and processors of frozen French fries, waffle fries, and other frozen potato products. I see. So there well, they have it. That explains why their CEO is blaming their problems on lower tater sales or particularly frozen tater sales through the old restaurant area. The company well, not, says here. Oh, go no, ahead. I, well, I was, I was going to say, I'm going to read, read here. The company is saying they're linking their lower foot traffic to its 4% decline at the end of the quarter in late May saying global restaurant traffic and frozen potato demand soften due to menu price inflation. So, the inflation is not creating greedflation for these guys. It is creating problemos for them. See, and I'm kind of reading between the lines here. There's a, there's a couple issues I have with this report. Number one, okay. they're blaming lower foot traffic uh, on their problems. I'm yes, not entirely exactly. sure that lower foot traffic is going to lead to you know lower <laughs> potato sales overall. Um, obviously so you're trying to say that if people don't use their feet as much. You mean you're saying they sit in a chair more? What, I mean, <laughs> well, pe people are still eating, right? So yes, they whether are. they're eating at restaurants or whether they're eating, you know, at home, I don't know that potato sales necessarily are down. And it could just be that these guys only supply to restaurants. And that's what I'm thinking. I think that's course. the deal. Yeah. See, see they're, they're linked. It's, they're not enjoying the Craig Slate tater purchase that is going to his local grocery retailer and picking up some tater tots or some sweet tater fries. I think these guys are tied directly to, you know, the McDonald's and Burger King of the world. And I think uh, those folks have seen... Uh, tater sales go down, according to this uh, Idaho CEO or this Lamb Weston CEO based in Idaho. Now, they also say in the article it's a supply demand imbalance, which, you know, 4% foot decline, traffic, lower potato sales to restaurants. That's one thing. But they also mentioned supply, which leads me to think that maybe they just have too many damn potatoes. I don't know. Just throwing it out there. 
Good point, you know. And you know, you know what happens in the in the produce business when you got too many? Prices kind of go down. <laughs> Whoa. It's crazy, but that's I don't know. It's a weird, weird concept. Well, here's an interesting factoid out of this, though. The comp this company, Lamb Weston. And, and we love you, Lamb. We got no beef here. We're just reading the damn article. You, you're the, you know, so, but Lamb, the company in the potato commerce world, it depends on the quick serve traffic for around 80% of fry sales. So 80% of what these folks in the fry business is, is all about what goes through the quick serve restaurants. That's a big number. That's a big percentage of your business. I mean, you That's, you got to have those quick serve folks uh, selling some fries if eighty percent of it's uh, where your your demand's coming from. Got got to diversify your portfolio. So sorry. Anyway, they they they. It, it, all I'm saying is is you know everybody that the inflation had you know and this goes back to we talked about the FTC and they're coming after folks. You know what? This is exactly what I was saying, Matt. If you take the price too high, people quit buying. And guess what? Somebody going to have to lower their price if they want people back in there eating taters at the quick serve restaurant. Simple as that. So It's bound to happen. The question is how quickly people make that change. But, but this is magic. It, it kind of proved my point. We don't need the FTC. We just need people to quit buying. It's almost like you handpicked two articles that, you know. <laughs> They kind of made a point. You know, what? <laughs> I would, I would, I wouldn't do that. That would never happen. Yeah. And then uh, real quick, just uh, Kroger and uh, a new uh, a branding strategy they've got. You know, lots, lots of this time of year. It's summertime. You know, local is in, and the grocery stores really get behind it. Well, Kroger's getting behind it with the field and, and vine label in the berry category. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, good looking pack. I, I took a look at some photos they had there. Nice looking pack, and uh, you know, I'm trying to take advantage of that. And berries should be should be good this time of year, don't you think? Absolutely, and I'm I'm all for you know promoting the the local crops when you have them. Um, you know, this has kind of been one of our our gripes on a lot of other commodities. People tend to point at the other guys and say, "Yeah, oh, you're the problem," rather than you know focusing on on themselves and promoting and. You know, I think uh, this is a, a fantastic way for, uh, you know, partnering with a retailer to, to really promote those items when they're in peak demand, uh, peak supply and, and move some volume through the uh, through the supply chain. Um, so, yeah, kudos to to Kroger and the uh, the growers that are working with them to, to promote these local items. Well, uh, it sounds like a, like I say, sounds like a good strategy to me and uh, folks get out there and get your blueberries and strawberries from the under the field vine label looks like some tasty stuff so well let's uh let's get in real quick to what's going on in the veg space uh what did what that uh, lot of different things going on we got weather you know we talked about that which every week we got weather but you know you've got these torrential rains you've had some wind you got heat in california it's kind of blowing things up you know, it hasn't yet, although I'm telling you this week, it feel, it, it's it's coming. I think from the quality standpoint and the shelf life, uh, the squash market um, still dinking around sub 10 bucks for the most part on that Zook. Yellow's just barely up above the, the 10 to 12 somewhere. And gray's kind of, gray's really still, it's, gray's been the stellar through the summer. I mean, it, it's kind of held its on at least in some decent pricing. But what do you think on the squash deal? Where's it going? My goodness. Yeah. I, I think when, whenever we get into this, this section and we have weather events going on, we have to couch all of this with, you know, next week, may be completely different. Uh, then again, in our world, next week is always different than, than what, yeah. we, what we've got going on right now. Right. Um, but man, I, you know, squash, I, I don't want to say it's usually a, a, a stinker this time of year, but you know, the end of July, <laughs> early August. <Stinker>. is. <laughs> It's, it's not exactly the sexiest of vegetables during this time frame, um, but with the the weather that is coming to the East Coast, I definitely see that turning. Um, you know, whether it's speculation or whether supplies actually are starting to dry up a little. You know, we've definitely seen a, a little bit more activity of people asking what's uh, what's the deal on the squash front, and you know, kind of sniffing around. So, 
I would not be surprised if that thing finally got off its ass and you know started making a, a northward move in the market space. Yeah, I think so. I think, I th of course, I've been calling for the squash market. It's going to get better right away. Yeah, that, that's. Uh, I, I'm always calling for the squash market to get better. I guess maybe maybe there's some maybe some connection there. I don't know, but uh, tune in next week for a higher squash market. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, you know, and uh, the green the 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 green bell peppers. <laughs> Uh, you know, we, we've talked, I know two weeks ago, that's never coming down. So just, you know, if you're doing contracts on green bell peppers, get ready. It's going to be a $30 FOB for a green bell pepper contracts going forward. Cause I don't think it's ever going to be cheap again in the green bell pepper space. So, uh, uh yeah, that I, damn market talk, is just amazing. I talked to a buddy of mine, um, grows up on the East coast and he, he is predicting that sometime over the next week or so, things will definitely start to ease up. Uh, with some more local programs coming online. Yeah, I saw <laughs> some some pictures of some beautiful new fields out in California that are going to be coming online. So while I do think this is going to continue to be a spicy market, I think there there will be a little bit of easing of prices, you know, over the next week or two. And it'll finally, you know, hit a hit a more manageable range, you know, going into the September, October time frame. Yeah. Uh, and just just in time. I guess we'll see. We need it. We need we need it to get a little little more imbalance because it it has just been crazy trying to to not only get the product but get product with quality. I mean that's the thing. It's like it's this industry. It's always the uh, highest prices, the worst quality, and the cheapest prices. Everything's beautiful. So it's the way uh, the way farming works. And it's crazy. Uh, speak. Speaking of cheap prices or lower prices, uh, the cute cute deal's been a been a little soft, don't you think? You know, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say that you and I may have jinxed it. What was it uh, three weeks ago? We all you know we yeah. said, ah, oh, the summer's perfect time for cukes and markets are always good, looking double digits, maybe north of twenty dollars, and here we are at uh, about half of that. And you know, while demand seems to have maybe perked up just a little bit uh, markets continue to struggle you know anywhere from yeah you know, 10 to 12 bucks on supers which is you know basically your 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 cost of production if you're uh if <laughs> if you're incredibly efficient uh, yeah and on uh on some of those off-grade packs so you know they're definitely something definitely needs to change you know not that uh, I wish bad on anyone, but uh, maybe the weather that it will be coming through the East Coast will, uh, you know, affect some of that supply and maybe spark a little bit of a, a rebound on the uh, on the market side of things. Demand just doesn't seem to be where it needs to be for this market to get off its ass. Yeah, it just seems like there's just so much. Uh, I think I don't know the demand changing. It's just. Seems like there's product uh, everywhere, and and like I say, quality is is, is really pretty good. Just uh, pretty much everywhere you go on, on that stuff. So buyers have the opportunity to to buy cheap and be choosy, and uh, and the, and they're definitely being that right now. There's a there's a famous person in our industry who always says it's it's all about demand. So uh, he knows who he is, and he probably doesn't tune in, but you know who you are. <laughs> And and if you are listening, go ahead and give us a shout out that yeah you, yeah you were listening to this week's show. We love you, uh, Romas. They are staying uh, strong. We we did we didn't jinx that one. We said steady, the Roman deal. Steady as she goes. Yeah, we we said that deal looked good. I I don't know if I yeah I mean I don't know that I had it on my bingo card for it to be. Uh, staying 20s or north of 20 i mean you you got to be in the small romas if you're going to get south of 20 bucks on a roma right now and the big boys are closer to 25 bucks a, a box so yeah that, that that market seems to be well established i seen sees that shows no signs of <laughs> softening <laughs> unless, unless, you, unless your tomatoes get too red, in which case I was gonna say that, that is unless you, you let them go to salsas, and then uh, yeah, and then you'll be dealing with the uh, cheaper price, <laughs> and they will be soft. Oh, bad produce jokes. Yeah, and never get old. 
Indeed. Well, uh, I guess uh, I don't have anything now. I, you've got a little something. You, you, you're going to be out of commission. How long you been out of commission for? I think you're getting, what are you, what are you getting oh, your, uh, <laughs> are you having a hysterectomy? What are you having done? So, 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 yeah, uh, so, something like that. <laughs> something, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what, kids. If your doctor tells you you got a problem that needs to be taken care of, don't wait a year to get it taken care of. I've got a, a, a small surgery. The, the surgery itself is going to be nice and quick. Thank you, Modern Medicine. However, they have not managed to make the recuperation process nearly as quick. So having a little hernia taken care of finally. 30-minute uh, operation, but the recovery will be very slow and very painful. However, drum roll, please. However, I plan on being here next week. I may not That's look what I hot, would, but I plan on being here. That is what I was hoping you were going to say. Well, look, definitely want to wish you the very best tomorrow, a quick and uh, painless uh, surgery and uh, and a quick, quick recovery. Like I say, hopefully next week, nobody can tell the difference. You're the same bright, shining star that you always are, Mr. Mandel. And, it, you know, if I start if I start making claims about squash going to 30 bucks, you know that the, the painkillers are working. Yeah. You know, and I, and I hope like hell you're not counting on me to do the weather next week because uh, <laughs> well, it'll be a, it'll be a much shorter version of the weather report. I can assure you the, the, the good news is I will have a lot of time to be watching the weather between now and then because I'm going to be laid up in bed with a pillow on my stomach and most likely a laptop on top of that pillow. So we'll, uh, we'll, right, we'll see. Now my, my Lions have their, their first preseason game against the Giants tomorrow. So we're going to see if I can watch that. That'll be uh, – hopefully they'll give me some some good news, good vibes, and that'll that'll kickstart. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't process. add to the pain. Hopefully it uh, it helps helps with the pain and doesn't add don't, to don't it. Don't need but, any yeah. stress from the game. Yeah. As as a Lions as a Lions fan, uh, I'm not sure that that I I would have good hopes for you. But anyway, enough on that note, buddy. Let's get the hell out of here. We will uh, see you next week. Uh, best recovery, guys. Everybody, thank you for listening to me and Matt today, and we hope to see you guys next week. Take care. We're out. Appreciate you.